Hey everyone, uh, thanks for joining today. Uh, I am uh, I'm excited to go through Y charts in depth with uh, you all. Um, and uh, today, as the title indicates, um, we will be covering kind of Y charts for personal uh, retail investors, uh, how to uncover new uh, investment ideas, manage your portfolio, uh, and track uh, the market and, and, and stay on top of um, you know your your your, your investments. Uh, a couple of things uh, to note and some 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 housekeeping things before we uh, get started. Uh, as we go through this, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. You can ask in the middle uh, via, I think there's a chat uh, box, um, but I'll also uh, leave time at the end for some uh, Q&A so you could ask uh, then as well. Uh, if I don't get to your question in the middle, I'll, I'll certainly try to get to it uh, at the end. Um, another thing to note, um, uh, this uh, webinar is being recorded. Uh, and will be emailed to everyone tomorrow uh, and will also be available uh, for replay on our YouTube uh, channel. Um, I highly recommend and, and uh, recommend uh, or remember to uh, like and subscribe um, to our YouTube channel and our social media so you don't miss out on anything uh, Y-Charts related in, in all our new uh, newly released videos and content, constantly uh, uh, uploading and producing uh, new uh, impactful uh, things for all of our clients and potential clients as well. Um, but let's get started. Uh, a little bit about me, right? Um, you know, my name is Nate Kleiman, as, as it says. Uh, I've been here uh, with YCharts for seven years now, uh, and I deal specifically with personal uh, retail investors. Uh, I deal with around 100, 150 uh, investors in, in a given month. Um, so, you know, over my time uh, here at YCharts, a little bit, uh, become a little bit of, a, of, of an expert uh, when it comes to uh, the different retail uh, investor use cases, uh, but also how to optimize Y charts for those different re uh, for those different use cases um, and the different workflows that uh, are associated uh, and can be used by retail investors. But what will what what are we going to be covering today? Right. So as uh, you know, it, it, it states um, we're going to be covering kind of three main topics. Um, you know, topic number one will be kind of finding new investment ideas and, and, and opportunities, um, but also using some uh, pre-built uh, templates to kind of automate that uh, uh, research for you. Uh, you know, topic number two we'll be co covering is uh, how to build and test, you know, portfolios, uh, looking at different strategies, comparing different strategies to one another, and ultimately seeing how we could increase and optimize our returns. Um, and then the third topic we'll be covering is, you know, monitoring the market um, and then again, staying on top of the investments as well as kind of the overall in, uh, uh, investment space. But with that in mind, um, and those topics in, in mind, let's uh, let's hop in. So, looking at watch charts, you know, I, I think a good place to start uh, would be just to kind of touch on our data for a second. You know, I, I think it's a good basis for the discussion. So speaking on, on, on our data, if some of you aren't already aware, within Y charts, we're gonna have over 21,000 listed stocks. On each individual stock, we're gonna have 50 years of pricing history, 30 years of fundamental data, and over 4,000 financial metrics. So it'd be hard pressed to find metrics we don't have. Now, on top of that, we're also gonna have over 40,000 mutual funds, 20,000 indices, and half a million plus macroeconomic indicators. Now, obviously, you know, you're, you're, you're not gonna use every single data point, but I bring that up to iterate, you see why we're driving value as a one-stop shop place for the research and analysis and why, you know, we're being used by, you know, tens and tens of thousands of, of retail investors because of the depth of data, it being in one place, but also the capabilities and the ways that we could actually analyze the data. So with the data in mind, let's now hop into my screen and let's go through some of these different capabilities. And again, some uh, neat workflows surrounding uh, retail and personal investors. Now, what we're looking at right here is our homepage and our dashboard. This is you know, something that we've actually recently revamped that I think is very, very impactful. And what's great about our dashboard is you see I could set up watches for individual companies. You know, I could set up watches for sectors, ETFs, track popular economic metrics. 
But what's great about our, our dashboard, and you could have you know, multiple dashboards, right? I have my investment dashboard. I could have my stock and sector dashboard. Obviously, what I'm calling my dashboards will be different than, than, than what you might call yours. But what's great about this is it is fully customizable. And this is something that we've recently revamped. So what I like is, you know, maybe I, I could drag and drop this, you know, hey, maybe I want, you know, this up top, right? And, you know, maybe I want to make this a little bit bigger. And maybe, you know, I don't like the, the, the line chart. Maybe I want it in terms of a, of a scatter plot, right? Um, this dashboard, right, is fully customizable. Now, within each watch list in and of itself, it's customizable as well, right? And I could set up alerts, talking about our alerts for a second, I could set up alerts on any of the 4,000 metrics. And it's not just price-based metrics, right? I could say, hey, you know what? Notify me if the PE ratio of a company that I'm following drops below 20. It'll shoot me an email, notify me. Or, hey, if I do want to track price movements, notify me if the price increases or decreases by you know, 3% in a given day, two days, month, year. Again, it'll shoot me an email, notify me. So what I really like, again, about the dashboard is this customization of it, right? And I could, again, track economic data, and I could come in here, uh, you know, once a day, see, okay, hey, what am I following? Where is it at currently? You know, when when's it next going to be released? What's the one-year change? What's the quick visual? So I don't need to rebuild these charts every single time. I build it at once. I have that custom homepage for me. But that's that's our dashboard. And again, I, I, I really like the customization behind it. Um, but let's go through another way to kind of monitor this. And this is also something that we've recently revamped that a lot of investors have been finding value in. And this is kind of our stock page. So if I hover over data and I come down to stocks. Now, this is something that I personally check, you know, kind of periodically throughout the day or once a day. And, and I also kind of inform my clients to, to, to check it. And what I really like about this page, and we could get this information in, in a variety of ways, but what I really like about this stock page is just how quick and easy it is for me to digest and understand, right? And what it's going to show us is it's going to show us, okay, what's the current returns, but what's the returns broken down by uh, indices? But then more specifically within each indice, What's the gainers of that indice? What's the losers, right? What's pulling up the index? What's pulling down the index, right? And we could do this over different time periods. So six months, three months. Again, we have 50 years of pricing history. But we could go to say year to date, okay, looking at the S&P 500, what's the top gainers? What's the top losers? What's pulling up the index? And what's pulling down the index, right? So very quickly, I could get some of that uh, detailed information kind of pulling back the hood, so to speak. Now, this is broken down by indices, but if I scroll down a little bit further, we'll, we've now broken this down by sectors, right? Basic materials, communication services, healthcare, utilities, technology. And again, I could change the date range, one month, three months. I could see, hey, which uh, sectors is up, which sector is down. And if we go to year to date, we could see, you know, hey, the technology sector is up 38% right? While the technology sector is down uh, 17%. So again, I just really like the, the, you know, the layout of it, how quick and easy it is for me to digest and understand. But that's the, that's the dashboard and kind of the monitoring components of Y charts as well, setting up the alerts. But let's now find some investments to kind of potentially include within our portfolio. Um, but before doing that, let's maybe talk about something that's a little bit topical, right? Which is the inflation rate. So obviously with inflation kind of at a, at a, at a, at a spiking and, and, and at an all time high, um, we could, let's find out, I should say, let's find out how, which sectors do well in moments of high inflation before we try to find these securities. So let's first kind of find out which uh, sectors uh, do well in, these, in, in this uh, type of macro uh, economy. So to do that, let's hover over tools and let's come down to fundamental chart. So tools, fundamental chart. Now, our charting tool is really easy. Uh, and all that data that I mentioned to you at the beginning of the call, right? 21,000 stocks, 40,000 mutual funds, 20,000 indices, half a million plus economic indicators, all that data can be overlaid, right? 
And on the top left corner under securities, I would type that in. So maybe I'll type in Apple, IBM, right? I could throw in financial metrics, right? Maybe I want to look at the PE ratio along with its earnings per share, right? So I could do a stock on stock example. But the example that I'd want to give you guys um, is, again, let's look at this type of information. Let's try to identify a sector that does well during moments of high inflation. So let's first overlay the sectors on top of each other. Now, for this, for the sake of the call and for sake of time, I've already built out this chart. So I'm going to hit the drop down and I'm going to hit open and I'll pull up my sectors ETF chart where I've already overlaid every single sector on top of each other, going back to 2000. Now, we're looking at the different sectors over, over going back to 2000, but let's now overlay the inflation rate to, to determine which uh, sector does well. So on the top left corner, same place that I typed in Apple, right? I'm now gonna search for that economic data that I'm looking for. So I'll type in US inflation. And I'm just going to make this original. So right now, we're overlaying the U.S. inflation rate on top of these different sectors. Now, this chart is a little messy to me, right? So let's kind of break this down and make it a little bit cleaner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down. And on the bottom left-hand side of the panel layout, I'm going to switch it from single panel to panel per financial metric. So now I have the sector performance on top and the U.S. inflation rate down below. Now, if we look at this chart for a second, right? almost kind of taking a top-down approach, we see right now from uh, uh, 2020 to current that you know the inflation rate obviously is kind of spiky, right? Well, let's look historically and see when this has also occurred. So going back historically, maybe we could look between uh, 2006 and 2008. So let's now change this date range on this chart to reflect that time period. So on the top right under date range, we're gonna go to 2006. And let's go to 2008. So going, looking back historically, um, we could see when the inflation was spiking, right, historically, which sector has done well? And looking at this chart, we could see that the energy sector in this light blue uh, was up 52% during that time period, while the financial sector was down 26%. So historically, when inflation has been high, we could see that energy sector tends to do well. Well, that's historically, so, but let's do the same thing between 2006 and 2008. Let's do the same thing, but now just switch this chart year to date. Well, the same story holds true, right? Year to date with inflation rising, what sector is up the most? Well, it seems energy sector is up 40%, while the uh, consumer uh, discretionary is down 20%. Right, so we've we've identified this trend using Y charts, overlaying both the economic data on top of the uh, security data. We've identified this trend of okay, that the energy sector in moments uh, uh, in times like this might be so uh, might be worth kind of including within our portfolio. So we've identified a, 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 a sector that we might want to invest in, but now that we've identified this sector. Let's now find some new investments. Let's find some securities and some underlying stocks to include within our portfolio that are, that are part of the energy sector. Let's find the best energy sector stocks. So now, hovering over tools, let's come down to Stock Screener. Now, our Stock Screener is very easy to use. It essentially runs off these two buttons on the top left. Modify security, add metric filter. Modify security is going to allow us to qualitatively filter it. Add metric filter is going to allow us to quantitatively filter it. So if I hit modify security, right, we're qualitatively filtering it. And we have a ton of different qualitative filters, right? We could go off of indices, show me comes the Russell 1000, maybe S&P 500. Um, 
we could go off events, show me comes with up current earnings or, or, or recent IPOs. So we have a ton of different qualitative filters that we could choose from. For this call though, given what we found out uh, a moment ago with us trying to focus on the energy sector, let's go to sectors and let's hit energy and let's hit select all. So let's look at all energy sector companies. So sectors, energy, bottom right, hit submit. And now we went from 29,000 companies now down to 1,300. Now I don't wanna look at all energy sector companies. So maybe I'll, I'll hit modify security again. And maybe I'll just look at uh, kind of uh, uh, the US uh, major exchanges. And now we're down to 242 companies. Now that's the qualitative uh, filtering aspect, right? But again, using the buttons on the top left, we could quantitatively filter it using add filter. Now we could filter it down based off any of the 4,000 metrics that we have. Now you'll see it's gonna be a predictive search engine. So identifying the metric you wanna use will be very easy. Uh, as we start to type things out, it's gonna kind of auto-populate. So let's hit add filter and kind of thinking of a screen that we might wanna do, let's. Uh, uh, maybe let's eliminate a, a small cap. So maybe let's just look at large cap. So maybe I'll, I'll do market cap is greater than 1 billion. Hit submit. Now down to 148 companies. Now, talk about the energy sector, maybe, you know, often um, I might want to include some, some dividends. So let's, let's uh, kind of filter off that. So we'll hit add filter here. We'll do dividend yield. And let's do is greater than 2.5. And now we are down to 63 companies. Now, the final filter maybe we'll do, so, so we've, we've identified kind of large cap companies with the energy sector uh, with good dividends, um, but ultimately let's find companies that have uh, been performing the best year to date, right? Um, so let's hit add filter and let's do year to date total returns. Now I could always do greater than or less than, right? I could do greater than 10%, greater than 15%, greater than 17%, right? I could always choose a specific number. But if I don't know a number that I want to filter off of, which in this case, let's just say hypothetically, I don't. If I don't know a number I want to filter off of, I actually like to use the percentile button. Or I could say, of the 62 companies we have left, just show me the top 50% higher value being better. Just show me the top 50% that have the highest year-to-date total returns. I don't always need to know a specific number. I could just use percentile. Top 50% higher value being better in terms of year-to-date total returns. Hit submit. And now we are down to 2.5. Give me a second while it loads. <laughs> Thirty-one companies. Now, if I'm happy with these thirty-one companies, I don't want to filter it down anymore. Now, what I could do is I could use these buttons on the right-hand side. Maybe I just want to plot some more information. So I'll hit add metric column to kind of add more columns to this, right? Maybe I want to know what it's. Uh, maybe just throw in some value, you know, metric. Maybe I want to know what its PE ratio is, or maybe I want to know what its dividend per share, a uh, five-year growth is, right? Hit submit. We'll now plot this information, uh, but we won't filter it down anymore. Um, what I could also do is I can hit save as a watch list. These 31 companies are gonna hit to my dashboard, I start to set up alerts to them, start to monitor them, kind of get, get and create that customized homepage. So maybe I wanna constantly check these companies, uh, see which ones are, are, are doing well. So I could, you know, hit save as a watch list. But then what I could also do is I could just save the screen as a whole. So I'll come to the top left, I'll hit the drop down, I'll hit save as, I'll just call the screen webinar example 
uh, 2.0, hit save as. And the neat thing about saving the screen is this screen will constantly update. So if I open up the screen tomorrow, there might be 32 companies that meet the criteria. There might be 30 companies. It's just constantly updating, constantly refreshing. And obviously, you could create as many screens as you like based on the strategy you might have, right? I mean, this is just an energy sector dividend screen. But if I hit open, you see I've been here a little over six years. So I have a ton of save screens, right? So you could create, you know, maybe you're a value investor. Maybe you're a technology growth investor. You could create as many screens as you would like. But again, what you know, using uh, using Y charts, just kind of a, a pause for a moment. What I really like is you know going from this fundamental charting feature where we were able to identify, okay, in moments like this with inflation rate rising, we were able to identify, take almost like a top-down approach, identify which sectors do well and which sectors underperform. We identified the energy sector. So then we said, okay, we've identified the energy sector, but now let's find companies that, let's find the best companies that to, to potentially include within our portfolio. And we were able to do that via the screener. And I, and I like how we're able to kind of tie these two together. Now, we've just built out a, a screen uh, or, or a screener from scratch. But one of the cool things that YCharts provides clients is a lot of pre-built uh, uh, templates, right? So maybe you want a, a little bit of a jumping off point, right? Or, or you say, hey, you know, I'm not too sure what metrics to use. Well, not to worry because YCharts will provide you a lot of pre-built templates. And let me show you that uh, and I'll open up a different page. So I'm just gonna open up another blank screen. Now, when I was building out the screen, right? I was building it from scratch just using these two buttons. But if you wanna use a pre-built template, if I hit the drop down on the top left and I hit new from template, we have about 30 or so pre-built templates. And these templates are broken down by categories. Maybe you're a growth investor, maybe you're a value investor, right? Um, you know, different special uh, 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 situations, right? Um, but if I click on any one of these uh, 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 pre-built templates, maybe I'll, I'll click, um, you know, stocks making new highs, you know, stocks that are, are within 5% are, are of their all-time highs. This is just an example. If I open this up, it's going to apply the filters already for us um, and already have these results, right? Uh, now we're down to 92 companies. Now what's awesome about these pre-built templates is you can now edit this to exactly your liking. So maybe I'll throw in you know, another filter. So, so we've kind of used this as a starting point, but now I can throw in another filter and maybe I just want you know, one year or let's just do year to date total return is greater than 5%, right? I can now edit this screen to my liking, down to 73 companies. So those pre-built templates might make your, your research a little bit more efficient if you need some, 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 some assistance. But going back to our screen, right? So, so we've identified these 31 uh, potential uh, companies to include within our portfolio that are in the energy sector, right? Uh, because we have identified that it was uh, energy sector is good within the inflation period. Um, but let's now dig into one investment a little bit further. Um, so looking at this, maybe I'll dig into a uh, Knoco Phillips, a pretty well-known company. So any single time you want to dig into one company a little bit further, whether you're currently investing in it, whether you're thinking about investing in it, all you need to do is you come to the top white search box and you type in the company you're looking for. So maybe I'll type in COP, hit enter, and now we're looking at Conoco Phillips quote page, showing us all information in relation to Conoco Phillips. It's going to show us a pricing chart of this company, again, going back 50 years, going back to 72. It'll show us key stats, news associated with the company, uh, events, earnings, uh, dividends. On the right hand side, it's going to show us a quick company profile, right? Uh, the sector it's in, the industry it's in, next earnings release, last earnings release, et cetera. Again, all information in relation to the company. But if you want to dig into the company a little bit further, you could actually click through these different tabs, right? Maybe I'll go to the financials tab. Here's where I can view Conoco Phillips' financials, their income statement, their balance sheet, their cash flow, pulling in every single line item, but again, going back 30 years because we have 30 years of financials. On the right-hand side under format, if it's a drop down, we have eight or nine different formats. Uh, Three-year growth, five-year growth, 
you know, it's trending quarterly, maybe switch to, uh, or it's trending uh, annual, maybe switch to quarterly, just like that's gonna change. Maybe switch to quarter over quarter growth, just like that's gonna change, right? Eight or nine different formats going back 30 years. Uh, but the other tab I'll touch on is actually this key stats tab. And this is actually one of my personal favorite tabs. Reason why I really like this tab is this is gonna show us a hundred of the most important and relevant metrics associated with ConocoPhillips. It's gonna show us their financials. It's gonna show us uh, their, their risk uh, performance, their dividends, as well as their valuation, right? A hundred of the most important and relevant metrics associated with the company. But what I really like is if I hit key stack comparison, it actually plots me those same 100 companies we were just looking at, but now versus its five or six direct competitors. So nice way to do some quick, quick comp analysis. And you could actually choose these competitors yourself if you don't like the competitors that we've chosen. So if I hit add comparables, maybe you don't wanna look at uh, uh, Delect US Holdings, and maybe you wanna add in uh, BP. Hit update. And there you go, we've now added in BP. So you can determine the, the, the comparables. Um, news, events. But the other tab I'll touch on um, is actually this uh, performance tab. Now, why I really, really like this performance tab is it's gonna show us the performance of ConocoPhillips, but now it's gonna show us in relation to some of its competitors and in relation to a benchmark, when, when, which in this case is the S&P 500. And you know, you can look at this in terms of a bar chart, you could break this down by years, you could break this down by months, or you could also break it down on a line graph as well. Again, changing the date ranges going back 30 years. So very quickly, I could see, okay, hey, what's the, what's the financials of its competitors? What's the valuation of its competitors? But also what's the performance of its competitors, right? So that's how we could dig into one company a little bit further, right? Going through you know, the, the news, the financials, the key stats. That's how you could dig into one company further after we've screened down for that company. Now, the final step in this process is, okay, we've we identified a sector. We found potential investments within that sector, kind of via the screener. We dug into one investment a little bit further. But the final step in this process is, Let's now include this company within our portfolio and let's track our portfolio on an ongoing basis. And the way that we could do that is via our model portfolio feature. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hover over tools and I'm gonna come down to model portfolios. Tools, model portfolios. Now to build a portfolio is very simple. On the top right, you would hit create and you'd hit blank model portfolio. For this call though, Let's just use our webinar example portfolio that I added uh, before this call. So I'm just gonna hit edit. But when you're building out a portfolio from scratch or, or, or when you're editing a portfolio, it's gonna look identical to this, right? All you need to do is you to assign a name to the portfolio, give it a quick description, assign a benchmark. And then all you would need to do is you would add in the securities and the weights that they make up in your portfolio. So let's add in Conoco Phillips. So let's maybe get rid of this, this uh, mutual fund, and you see I could have ETFs, I could have stocks, but let's maybe get rid of this uh, uh, mutual fund and let's add in Conoco Phillips. And let's say that makes up 4% uh, of our portfolio. So we've added in this, port we added in the new security that we've identified. Let's hit update. And now let's hit save. Now this portfolio is gonna be calculated uh, with that new uh, security added. Now, while, that's, while this is calculating, which will only take a, a couple seconds, um, coming back to the ConocoPhillips uh, quote page, one thing I, I, I wanna to touch on that I, I, I did not mention that a lot of uh, individuals find useful is this multi-chart feature. Now, what's cool about this multi-chart feature is um, unlike the, uh, fundamental charting functionality where you're overlaying things on top of each other. The multi-chart is kind of this panel format. Um, and it's pretty cool because 
you know, you could drag and drop, right? Maybe I want price to sales ratio over here. Maybe I don't want earnings per share. So let's get rid of it. And maybe I want, um, let's look at free cash flow, five-year growth. And now I've added in free cash flow, five-year growth, which I don't think they have any positive free cash flow, which is why it's not showing up. Um, but here's in this tabular uh, format where I could quickly get a look at all the KPIs. So uh, instead of the key stats tab, where you're looking at the KPIs here, you can look at it visually in kind of this boxed format. But coming back to our portfolio, right? So, so it's now done calculating. Uh, and now if we open this webinar uh, example portfolio with a uh, Conoco Phillips, we can now see and track the performance moving forward. And it's gonna show us all information in relation to our portfolio that we just built out based off the weighting and securities within our portfolio, right? It's gonna show us performance versus the benchmark. It'll show us key stats. Um, it'll show us a uh, risk information, right? Hey, what's the alpha, the beta, the standard deviation, the max drawdown, I can change the date ranges on that information, right? So again, it'll just show us all information in relation to our portfolio. What's really cool is maybe looking at this holdings overlap. So maybe you have some funds and some stocks, you know, you could see, hey, you know what, what's my actual uh, uh, weight of, of Netflix? What's my actual allocation towards Apple, right? If you have some funds and some stocks, right? We could look at that holdings overlap. Um, I could also look at the performance tab. And when looking at the performance tab, what's cool about this is it's gonna show us the performance of our portfolio. But now it's gonna show us if we added in a comparable and maybe I'll add in uh, John's portfolio and I'll add in uh, Nate's portfolio and a dividend or let's do sample model portfolio. I could compare my portfolio, not just only versus the benchmark, but I could now compare it to other portfolios as well. So this is when, you know, where you could see, okay, hey, maybe you want to compare different strategies. Maybe you have an inflation uh, 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 conservative portfolio, and then you have a technology growth portfolio. You have a value strategy. You could see historically which portfolio has done better, right? Which is pretty cool. Now, this is looking at it visually. But if we scroll down, we could obviously look at this information quantitatively in terms of rows and columns as well. Comparing our portfolio to a benchmark as well as to other portfolios and to other strategies. And now we could track this also on an ongoing basis. So that's, that's uh, you know, some of the most impactful ways that I've seen uh, uh, retail uh, and personal investors leverage Y charts. Um, and just to kind of uh, uh, summarize, um, you know, starting with the dashboard, right? This ability to kind of uh, create a homepage to your liking and the size that you're liking, set up alerts, um, track it via chart, track it via scatter plots, track the sectors. Um, then, you know, what we did to kind of summarize, we went to the fundamental charting, we overlay taking a top-down approach, overlay the macroeconomic data, looking at the inflation rate for, in the different sectors, see which sectors perform uh, well during different time periods. We identified the energy sector. And then what we did was we screened down and we find the best performing energy sector stocks uh, year to date with strong dividends. We then dug into that company a little bit further, dug into ConocoPhillips, compared it to its competitors. And then we added ConocoPhillips to our portfolio, which we can now track on an ongoing uh, basis. But that is, uh, that's why charts. Um, let me now kind of uh, leave some room for a, a Q&A, um, kind of opening up this chat button. One of the questions that I'm looking at uh, says, can we download the sector return uh, chart? Uh, and the answer to that is 100%. Coming back to our chart for a second, uh, on the top right corner, you'll see this export button. Now this export button is literally everywhere. It's across 99.9% .9 of our tools, literally everywhere. Anywhere you see sort of information, you'll see this export button. One click of the button, I could take the data that we're looking at and I could export it into Excel. So uh, the, the, the question was, uh, can we export the data? 100%.
Uh, the other question, I'm just kind of going through questions. And if, and if you do, this is the time, uh, I should say, uh, if you do have any questions, now would be the time to ask. Um, kind of leaving some room for some, some uh, Q&A. But uh, going through the questions, uh, the other question was, can we filter companies can we filter companies that have exceeded their earnings expectations? Uh, great, great question. Sorry, I'm having some pop-ups here. Uh, can we uh, filter companies that have exceeded their earnings expectations? And the answer to that is 100%. So the filter that we would use there, coming back to our screener, right? Uh, hitting add filter, that would be earning surprise. So annual earning surprise, let's say is greater than zero. So that's saying, show me companies that have beaten their earnings oh, from, from, from last year. So Blackstone Materials, LP, looking at it, uh, it's earning surprise of 1.31. Will it beat its earnings per share uh, uh, by one, uh, and one percent to three? Um, can we add sleeves to the indices? Great question. And the answer to that is 100%. Of course we can. So coming back to our portfolio, our model portfolio, I should say, when building out our portfolio, I'll just hit create new, you can either choose an individual security, Apple, right? Or once you've built out a portfolio, that portfolio actually becomes a security in and of itself. So maybe I'll have within my portfolio, I'll actually have Nate's portfolio. And I'll also include the webinar portfolio. So Nate's portfolio is 50%. This webinar portfolio is 25% and Apple is 25%. So I certainly can have uh, sleeves. Uh, looking at the questions again, uh, someone's asking, can we get uh, percent weightings on the ETFs? Great question. Typing in an ETF, let's type in XLE. This is now looking at XLE's quote page, showing us all information in relation to this uh, ETF. If I go to the holdings tab, we can now see the, the weightings of these uh, the underlying constituents of this ETF. Um, so that's Y charts uh, in, 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 again, kind of a, a, a nice uh, high level uh, walkthrough, talking about a lot of the uh, best practices for retail uh, individual investors. Um, I will uh, uh, note that um, there should be a poll coming out uh, uh, at the end of this um, uh, webinar for, or even now, um, I see now, um, asking uh, if you want to take a, um, a free trial or have someone kind of to give you a personalized demonstration. Uh, I highly do recommend uh, uh, doing that. Reason being is we could answer any more uh, in-depth questions, give you kind of a, a tailored walkthrough, um, and really show you kind of one-on-one -on -one how Y charts can uh, aid in your investment process, enabling you to make smarter investment decisions. Um, you could also give us a call or go to YCharts.com uh, to start your start your trial. Um, if you do have any additional questions, again, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, again, happy to do a one-on-one -on -one demonstration um, to kind of give you a nice uh, walkthrough. Uh, but it was a pleasure speaking with you all. Um, and uh, hopefully we will be in contact shortly um, to uh, uh, help you along with your investment uh, journey.